Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, one of the terms you're going to be hearing a lot as an IT professional is object storage. So it probably makes sense to take a step back and look at object storage and how it compares to traditional file storage that we have today. To help with that conversation, I've invited Sanjay Patel to the whiteboard. Sanjay, you're with EMC. Uh, what do you do there? So I'm an advisory system engineer uh, focused on object storage and our emergent technologies division. Okay, so obviously one of the products we'll be talking about today is your guys' ECS product. How does that fit into the overall EMC portfolio? So ECS is kind of the evolution of the knowledge that EMC has had in the space in the object storage world. We started back with Centera in 2001, kind of evolved over years, now 15 years in. We like to say after Atmos is kind of our third growth generation, whatever you want to really call, of the storage platform. Yeah, so this is not your first rodeo when it comes to object this storage. This is not. All right. So you got a parking lot drawn up here. Take us through this. You know, one of the things we've been trying to think of is what's an easy way to try to explain to our customers and what is the difference between file and object. And one thing we've used over the years is the analogy of a parking lot. And the way, what I've drawn here is basically a parking lot. The X's denote cars that are already in there. Okay. And say, I got three cars. I got a blue car, a yellow car, and a green car. Okay. And I want to basically park them in there. So I simply go in. It's easy when I got the blue one. I could put blue in spot 12. I could put green in slot 11. And I could put yellow in slot 4. Okay. Real easy. And as I want to retrieve them and I want to go get them, I know, hey, I'm going to make a little notepad. I'm going to say car number uh, yellow is in space 4. And then car color green is in slot seven. And then car uh, color blue is in slot 12. So okay. I just keep it, root down, little notepad. I know where the cars are. Yep. The challenge we fundamentally have is when I need to get all cars retrieved at once, I'm going to get a bottleneck. So as we start pulling in, as long as with the other cars, say it's 5 o'clock, everyone's checking out, we all know the traffic and traffic jam of getting out of parking garage. Sure. So we have that challenge. So what do we say? All right, more efficient way is we got a couple other parking lots here. So let's basically split these things up. Let's kind of get rid of the cars that we had. Let's make this just a single four car lot. Let's make another four car lot. Let's make another four car lot. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, line, line. And then in here, we'll basically now say our green car is going to be here. This car is still parked here. And then our blue car is going to be here. Now what we do is I now have to add another field because this is lot A, lot B, lot C. So we'll say which lot. So the complexity of what I'm trying to track now gets a little bit higher, right? Exactly. So now we're going to say, Yellow is in space four in lot A. We're going to say now for the green car, it's in slot one in lot B. Okay. And then we're going to see basically the uh, blue car is now in uh, slot one in lot C. So what we've done is we've come made it a little bit more efficient when we want to get the cars out and retrieve them. It's faster. Right. The challenge is now getting a little bigger here. Right. Now, you have to kind of know where things are. Now, just to equate this to storage real quick, so these would be, in storage terms, these would be three separate storage systems. Exactly. So okay. what I basically depict when I, when I draw a parking lot, that's a file system. Okay. And so the challenges around file systems, they basically say, if you have a single tree, it's going to become challenging. Okay. So they say, break it up and shard your data across all the file systems. Okay. So we're building multiple file systems. So three here. file systems. Got the best it. way to think about it, just think about cars. Okay. And then now, where the challenge is, that's all easy and that works great, eh, minimal overhead. Right. The challenge is, I need to now start traveling. And I only like to drive my type of car. Okay. And I need my colors for the way we present. Okay. So we're going to basically now go to, and I'm going to abstract this a little bit, we got to basically go to London and Rio at the same time and get cars there. Because I'm going to hop a plane and start going. Okay. So we can say right here, we'll call this the USA. Call this UK, and then we'll say down here Brazil. Okay. So the challenge is, how do we get the extra cars there? So what I'm basing it on doing, I'm going to make copies of the car. I'm going to send identical ones because I can't get that same make and model okay. in those sets. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to coordinate 
a shipper to basically transfer the cars from the US, the additional copies of the car, right. to both Brazil and to the UK. Okay. The challenge is now I'm going to fly Brazil. Right. I need to know where those cars are ending up. Right. Because so now I got three locations and three lots, right? Right. So yeah. now what we're doing is now I got a low. Now what I'm starting to expand on, and I'm gonna, you could understand the complexity, is what country it's going to be in, mm -hmm. what lot, and what space. So what's going to basically start happening is now I have another Y field, G, B, another Y, G, B, and now we're going to just arbitrarily throw, say we remain the same spaces. One, one, four, one, one, A, B, C, A, B, C, and then this will be USA, 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 UK, dot, dot, dot. I think you get the point I'm getting at. Yeah, so uh, the complexity here becomes pretty, pretty big right. deal, right? And I'm going to fly to Brazil, right. my colleagues fly to the UK. Right. So what I got to do, I got to replicate this. Right. Basically send it over to him. So the challenge that we're starting to demonstrate is the complexity of trying to keep things performant, but as I start going to a multi-site type of active type architecture, being able to get the same thing, it becomes really heavy on the database or okay. the application side of what's going on. So what we try to say is, what if I can just take all this away, right? And rather just deal with a concierge or a valet mm -hmm. or someone I simply just give it to and say, the behaviors that I want in this system, you simply just give me a ticket and a locator. And regardless of what side I go into, George, if you're in the UK, I say, just give them this ticket number, yeah. and they'll show you what car you want. Okay. And vice versa. When I go to Brazil, I just show them a ticket number, and I get what I want. That's really object storage. Okay. But so the object storage system basically tracks that for you, and then you just, it becomes your valet, essentially. Exactly. Okay. And so what we're really trying to do is we're simplifying this whole database environment that okay. the application is taking over. We're letting the storage system now do this. Okay. The other thing we're doing is all these microservices of coordinating the shipper and taking care of, hey, who's placing the car? All these additional things that it really sure. expand on, yeah. that becomes complex. Right. That's what applications or modern applications say when they're dealing with multiple sites. That's a challenge you're dealing with. Okay. So object storage fundamentally simplifies the architecture, right. simplifies the user experience, and why we're even in this marketplace and what we're doing. Now how does ECS fit into all this? So, Obviously, we give the basic attributes with the object store, as I kind of highlighted here. Okay. But let me bring up, just bring back the parking lot, okay. the, the four parking lot slot uh, that I had. So this represents each of these little squares in there. Exactly. Yep. So we got X, we got X, we got X, and then we have an open space. Right. Now, one of the challenges with any file system, or really any storage, is about small files. When I got very small files, think scooters in this analogy. Okay. How do we efficiently park in this one spot? If it's a file system, a scooter is going to take up that spot. Right. Not very efficient. So I right. got two more scooters, what's going on? You can take up two more spots. Two more spots. Yeah. So what we do is now that we have a valet, he's basically going to basically maximize the space that we have in here and pack in the scooters in that slot. Geez, he could even take a few more cars and put it here as well. Right. And we see that behavior when you go to a parking lot that's overfilled, sure. introduce the valet. That is what we're doing. So what, what ECS does fundamentally, aside from giving the multi-site active that I've kind of explained, is it gives a really efficient model in how we handle not only large files, but small files. Okay. And, and a lot of these object environments have you know, millions, if not trillions, of small files, right? Exactly. Yeah. So th this is ex why we're doing, when you start thinking sensor data, or data that's being spewed into these large data lakes, right. that's another fundamental. Makes sense. Now, around the consistency model, as we push the cars, going back to the car analogy, and we put the cars in all the sites, there's two different models. You have eventual consistency and strong consistency. Okay. Eventual consistency basically says, hey, when I update on one of the sides, say I change the tires to a different type of tire, mm -hmm. it means eventually the other sites will get the right tire. Right. Strong consistency basically means as soon as I change a tire in the UK on my red car, mm -hmm. all the other red cars know to have their tires change if somebody comes and gets them. Okay. That's the valet, that's that concierge, that's that storage engine that's above that's taking right. care of it. ECS does a strong, consistent model in how it delivers its multi-site active. Okay. Others well, will go sense. eventual consistency, we do strong consistency. Okay. And then the other thing is around the concept of assigning metadata or value to the cars. Okay. So all, all this can be considered metadata to a sure. certain extent. Right. If I have basically a, a yellow car, green car, blue car, those are colors. 
Right. Those are values that I could assign with the car. I could even say what owner, what type, what's going on. So an object system, I could assign that and give that to it. So now by negating all this database, one of the attributes people lose is the ability to do search concepts okay. and be able to say, hey, within my storage or within my l inventory of cars, where are the blue cars? Okay. Just a very generalized. I don't necessarily need the object ID, but give me all the object IDs or all the IDs that r relate to a blue car. Okay. What we, we do within ECS is we have the concept of search. Okay. So we introduce that uh, coming up later of the year, the ability to now just say, give me the blue cars based on the metadata tag. So when we look at ECS, the concepts that we do around storage efficiency, both with not only large files, but small files, when we look at how we do strong, consistent, multi-site active namespaces, how we do metadata and the ability to introduce search on that, uh, you know, we, we feel it's definitely a unique product and something that hopefully we go a little bit deeper in another session. Sanjay, how's this packaged? So from, from an ECS perspective, let's kind of take away this and let's take away that and take away that. So ECS is fundamentally software. Okay. I mean, all the intelligence and everything that we're doing is going to be software, and it utilizes commodity hardware. Okay. So, so commodity servers, commodity storage. Exactly. Okay. So our customers can really kind of take it in a couple approaches. Because it's fully software, they can provide their commodity, and we can run on really any DIY type approach. Okay. Uh, the other thing is EMC, we provide an appliance type model. Okay. And the reason we do that is even though it's commodity, we can get what customers get, commodity pricing on underlying hardware, but they get the overall experience of not having to service a bunch of disks that die. Right. When you look at commodity platforms, things break. Right. You need software that's designed to basically handle that. Okay. So we give choice to our customers. Uh, who picks what? It's really up to them. Sometimes it just comes down to you have more time or more money, right? Exactly. Okay. And we know people are a real limit nowadays, so we want to give them ease and speed of deployment. Okay. Well, Sanjay, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, I appreciate it, George. Thank you. So there you have it. That should give you a good primer on what object storage is and what some of the advantages are over uh, traditional file storage. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>